Williams Corporation. Are they any good? Now, because we work with over 58 developers here at Opus Partners recommending them as investment properties, property investors often ask, well, what do you think of insert developer name here? And one of the ones that routinely comes up is Williams Corporation. So in today's video, you're gonna get an honest review of what we think. Now, because New Zealand is a small place, Everyone knows everyone, so I do need to address any potential biases. We have recommended Williams Corporation properties as investments in the past, that was primarily three years ago. We don't recommend them right now. Now, because of that, there is an incentive for me to slag them off, say they're bad, tell you to come buy a property through us instead, mate. But I'm not gonna do that. This is gonna be an honest review based on the facts. So who are Williams Corporation? Well, they are the second busiest home builder in New Zealand, ahead of Mike Green Fletcher's, and behind, like everybody else, GJ Gardner. Now, they tend to build townhouses. In fact, 90% of the properties updated on BCI, which is a data provider, are townhouses. And they're primarily building in Christchurch, followed by Wellington, and then Auckland. Now, we do know that they are reaching out into some other markets like Nelson and Tauranga. We just haven't seen that come through in the data just yet. Now, for you guys who have been watching our channel for a while, you'll know that Williams Corp actually came onto our show, The Deal, last year. And when Blair Chapel, the managing director, was talking, he discussed how they tend to follow standardized designs and use similar materials across their projects. Now, that provides them with some efficiencies that we'll talk about in a moment, but it does mean that each project looks pretty similar. So in other words, you'll recognize a Williams Court property when you see it. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Should you buy an investment property from them? Let's start with the pros. The first is affordability. So Williams Corp tend to build smaller properties than the other top 10 busiest developers in the country. In fact, on average, their properties are half the size or half the floor plan of properties built by the other nine top busiest home builders. And because of that, what does it mean? Well, their properties are more affordable to build. So the average construction cost of a Williams Corp property is 58% lower than the other average of the other top nine developers. Now, let me be clear, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to buy a property 58% cheaper if you go through Williams Corp compared to somebody else, but it does mean, or it does give a broad indication that their properties are gonna be on the more affordable side. Now, this data isn't perfect. It comes from council consents and permits, and it comes from BCI, but the trend is correct. For instance, a one bedroom or two bedroom townhouse is gonna be cheaper or more affordable than say a four bedroom standalone property from a company like Mike Greer. The second thing I'd say is they have good use of space. So I've stayed in one of them before as an Airbnb. And even though the floor plan is small, it often uses space well. And the third thing I'd say is they've got a bit of grunt behind them. They've got some scale, they've got a team, they've got some standardized processes. Now that lowers the risk that the property isn't gonna be complete. In other words, because they've built a lot of properties before, they stick to the stuff they know, they can deliver in a good time. Now let's talk about the other side, some things that you want to consider, especially as a property investor. Often we see that they are expensive for what they are. Now you're probably thinking, Ed, you just told me that they're really affordable, what do you mean? Well, something that costs $20 is relatively affordable. But if I said it's $20 for a cup of coffee, you'd say, Ed, that's a really expensive cup of coffee. And so I want to dig into their properties and what they're selling as of today to give you an example of what I mean. Here is a one bedroom townhouse in Addington, which is based in Christchurch, and that's being sold for 639K. Now I know for a fact that there are other developers building in this suburb, building two bedroom townhouses with a car park that are slightly cheaper than that. So you can pay slightly less money and get an extra bedroom. And let's take a look at another development. Here's one in Papua Nui Christchurch. Price on this is 615K and that is for two bedrooms. Now, actually that price is not bad for a two bedroom townhouse, but this property doesn't have a car park. So I think, oh, 615 for a two bed townhouse would be good if it had a car park, but it doesn't. So it's a bit expensive for two bed, no car parks. Now, if you want to know how much we think you should spend on investment property, click up here because we've recorded a whole video on that. Now, a fair criticism could be, well, Ed, maybe you're only choosing the most expensive ones to show. Look, I chose the first two properties that came up when I'm looking through their website, but what I'd encourage you to do is 
look at their website, look at their pricing, compare it to other developers, and make up your own mind. See if you agree with me or not. And another criticism could be, well, Ed, maybe they're higher spec, maybe they're nicer properties. Look, there could be many reasons why their properties are more expensive. What I'm just focusing on right now is that there is a price difference. The second thing to consider is the cash flow. So I took that one bedroom property in Addington I just showed you and I ran our standard cash flow model on it. And what you can see is that if you purchase this as an investor over 15 years, you'd have to drop about 94K in cash to top that property up. Now, if you purchased a similarly priced property in that same suburb, say a two bedroom townhouse, the amount of cash you'd have to put in is only about 52K net. So in other words, you'd have to put in 80% more cash as an investor into the Williams Corp compared to an equivalent townhouse. Now, to be fair, they're not holding out every property and saying buy this because it's a great investment and it's got good cash flow. But what I'm just trying to say is if you're evaluating this as an investor, this is what you're going to want to look at. And of course, again, to be fair, not every single property has bad cash flow. In fact, the one we accepted on the deal had good cash flow. So we said, hey, we will recommend that to investors. The third thing to think about is any questions around the future capital appreciation, the property increasing in value. And I think there are some valid questions that investors often raise with me. The first people say is, you know, if they're building similar designs, there's a lot of supply of the same looking properties on the market. Now, when I come to sell that, when I want to cash out, Am I going to struggle to attract a premium price if there are a lot of similar properties on the market at the same time? It's a fair question to ask. The second thing that people often ask is, well, they're building a lot of properties without car parks. Is that going to affect the increase in value my property will receive in the future? Now, because on-street parking is becoming harder to come by and there are more properties only being built today that don't have car parks, we don't have any solid data on that today. But Again, I think it's a fair question to ask. I think it's something to consider because we know from owning a property management company that having properties without car parks does make it harder to rent. It does mean more vacancy and it does mean lower rent as well. Look, again, doesn't mean that everything's a bad investment. It just does come down to the individual deal and you'll want to assess what it means for you. Now, let's wrap up by talking about who they're the right fit for, who they're perhaps not the right fit for. I think they can be a really good fit for owner occupiers. So I've got a friend, lives in Wellington, and she bought her first home, a one bedroom Williams Corporation townhouse. And she loves it because she was able to afford her first property. And that's a great thing. The fact that they're building a one bedroom townhouse and that is what some people can afford and that's what they wanna live in, that's a great thing. Now on the other side, would that property have been the right fit for a property investor? It wouldn't have been if you ran the numbers. So often can be a good fit for owner occupiers. You want to analyze the individual deal for property investors. Often I've found not the right fit. Now I don't want to come across as too negative because there are some real pros to Williams Court property. They're relatively affordable, they have good use of space, and there's a bit of grunt behind the company. But look, not every Williams Court property is going to be right for everyone. Now what I want to know is, what do you think of Williams Corporation? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Let me know in the comments section below. And also let me know any other developers you'd like us to do an honest review of. And while you're down there, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button and toggle that little bell so that you get notified about all our future videos.